Hello everybody, my name is Smarty, short for Smarty Reads, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be reading Chapter 12 of Changes in the Air, Mallory. It's called Surprises. Before we begin, make sure you like this video, subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you know when I upload a new video. And also, share this video with your friends and family so they can watch me read as well. But other than that, let's begin. Surprises. Get off the phone already, says Max. I wave at my brother like he should stop talking. Then I cover my ear that's not next to the receiver so I can hear what Marianne is saying. See you soon, I say as I hang up. Max looks at me and shakes his head. Do you know how many times a day you talk to her? I start counting in my head. But it's a lot, so I give up. Sorry, I say to Max. I know I've been a phone hog lately, but I haven't left the house for a week. I've been by Cheeseburger's side the whole time. Actually, she's been by my side the whole time. She kept me company while I watched Fashion Fran, read the gardening book Mrs. Black dropped off for me, and wrote letters to Chloe Jennifer. She kept me company while I did other things, too, things I did, hadn't planned to do. Max rolls his eyes at me as I leave the kitchen so I don't mind. I'm too happy right now to let anything bother me. Mom and I took a cheeseburger back to Dr. Alvarez this morning for a checkup. And he said she's fine. So this afternoon, I'm going to Marianne and Joey's house for the first time. Mallory, Marianne screams as soon as I get out of the car in front of the Winston's new home. She and Joey are waiting for me on their front porch. Marianne flies down the sidewalk to meet me. She gives me a big hug. I'm so happy you're here, she says. Me too, I say. There's a reason she's happy you're here, says Joey as he comes up to the grate comes up to greet me. Her room is a mess, and she's been waiting for you to get here and help her set it up. Marianne makes a guilty face. That's true, she says like she's not ashamed to admit it. Then she pokes po Joey in the ribs. Your room isn't any better, Joey laughs. Unfortunately, that's also true. I loop my arms through both of theirs. Don't worry, I say. I'll help both of you. They both smile like they're glad to hear that. So this is our house, says Joey as we walk in the front door. I take a look around all the wood floors and light yellow walls. All the furniture that was in the Winston's old house is in this one. Nice, I say. Joey and Marianne show me the living room, the dining room, the den, and then the kitchen. Mallory, says Colleen we went, when we walk into the kitchen. It's so good to see you. She's feeding baby Charlie. He looks like he's grown since I saw him a week ago. Frank and Grandpa Winston come into the kitchen when they hear all the noise. Look who's here, says Frank. He high-fives me. Are you hungry, says, asks Grandpa Watson. Winston. Marianne and Joey shake their head as she look at each other and shake their heads. Sorry, Grandpa, says Joey. Mallory's here to help us set up our rooms. She doesn't have time to eat. Grandpa Winston laughs. I've seen both of your rooms, he winks at me. I'm sure you're going to work up a, quite an appetite this afternoon. Oh no, I say to Joey and Marianne. Are you ready, Joey asks. I think so, I say as I follow my friends up the stairs. We pass a room with a baby sleeps here sign on the door. Then we pass another room with a sign that says keep out. I know who sleeps there, I say to Joey and Marianne. They both laugh. Winnie had that sign on her door at their old house. I guess some things never change. The next room we came come to is Joey's. He cracks the door op he cracks open the door slowly. There are boxes and stuff everywhere. It's a huge mess. I'm not even sure where to start. And then there's Mallory, Marianne, and Joey. Maybe you want to help Marianne first, says Joey. Uh sure. I can't think of anything else to say, Joey laughs, but you have to promise to come back. No problem, I tell him. Then I follow Marianne. She leads me down the hall and pushes open a door with a giant sunflower on it. Her new room looks almost exactly like her old room. It's painted the same color, and she has the same furniture. She even has the same posters on the wall. Wow, I say, smiling. I feel like we're in, we're still in your old room. The only difference is that all my stuff is, is that my stuff is all over the place, says Marianne, pointing to the boxes on the floor. And it's on the second floor, which means it would be hard for me to climb up your window, I say. Marianne laughs at that. Ready to work, she asks. I nod and we dig in. 
We work all afternoon until everything is put away. Before, after. Wow, says Marianne. When we're done, I can't believe how good it looks. Thanks so much for helping me. Sure, I say as I look around her room. Every single thing is in perfect order. Marianne nods again. It will probably never be this neat again. We both know that's the truth and crack up. Okay, says Marianne. I have a surprise for you. She makes me sit on her chair. Open your eyes, she says. When she tells me to open them, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Actually, I'm not sure, really sure what I'm seeing. Marianne is holding something that looks like a cake on a platter, but it doesn't look like the kind of cake you would want to eat. What is it? I ask. Marianne smiles. It's a friendship cake. She holds it closer so I can get a better view. I take a good long look. That's a lot. There's a lot to see. Marianne used a round box shaped like a cake and glued pictures of us all over the box. There are all sorts of pictures of fun things we've done over the years. There are pictures of us from camp and at home and on Halloween and when we went on the cruise. There's a picture of us with Fashion Fran when we went to New York and got to be on her show. There are even pictures of us when we were little. Plus, Marianne added cute stickers of things I love, like hearts and cats and smiley faces and fashion. She put the cake cake on the cake stand, so it really looks like a cake. I love it, I say to Marianne. She grins. I wanted to do something nice to show show you how much our friendship means to me, but I didn't want to make another scrapbook. She paused. I wanted to make something new and different. She looks at me and continues talking. Mal, I know you've had a hard time with the move. I guess with the move, a lot of things are different. I guess what I'm saying is that when things change, you just have to deal with it. Do you know what I mean? I do know what it mean. What she means. It's kind of the same thing Dad talked to me about at the wish pond. But the truth is that while it might be easy for Marianne to do, it's not always so easy for me. I look down at the stab on my knee. I had a, I have had a really hard time. I have had a hard time. I say. I've been really sad that we don't live next door to each other anymore. I pause. What I have to say next might not be something she wants to hear, but I feel like I need to say it. I guess it kind of bothers me that that I just I didn't seem like it was hard for you. Marianne shakes her head. I know that it was it it wasn't hard, but I just don't show it the same way you do. She shrugs. Even though we're best friends, we handle things differently. I nod. I see where she's coming from. Marianne gives me an, enough of the serious talk look. We might have some differences, but there are some things we both like to do, like watch Fashion Fran. Now the cheeseburger's better, you can come over every day and we can hang out just like we always have. Not every day, I say. Marianne looks at me like she's not sure what I'm talking about. I'm helping Mrs. Black in her garden on Mondays, I say. Marianne makes a face like I just wanted to. I wanted to jump off a bridge or eat a raw onion. Ugh, that would be so boring. It's actually kind of fun, I say. But I'll be doing something else that's even more fun. What is it? asks Marianne. I take a deep breath and start explaining. While Cheeseburger was sick, I spent a lot of time just sitting next to her, rubbing her back and looking at her. One day, I picked up my sketch pad and started drawing her. And once I started drawing, I couldn't stop. I drew her from every angle in lots of different ways. I pause and look at Marianne. She looks like she was waiting for me to continue. So I do. I really enjoyed drawing her, so I asked Mom if I can take an art class. She signed me up for one on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Fern Falls Youth Center. Marianne frowns a little. Taking an art class doesn't seem like a fun thing to do in the summer, she says. It does to me, I say. Then I shrug. I guess that's just another way we're different. Marianne nods like she gets what I'm saying. Then she smiles at me. Well, there's one thing that will always be the same. I smile back. I think I know what she's going to say. No matter where we live, we'll always be best friends, says Marianne. I couldn't have said it better myself. I hold up my pinky. Marianne hooks hers around mine, and we pinky swear. Some things might change, but some things are forever. That's the end of that chapter. I. I'll see you next time when I read The Meaning Forever. Bye, anyone. Bye, everyone.